Hey, welcome back to Pete Plays. Here we are playing Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Uh, we just finished uh, King Knight, um, or Shovel Knight King of Cards yesterday, and we're jumping back in um, to some Legend of Zelda, but now that I say that, I, I just now realize that uh, I haven't yet posted the first, or the last, it doesn't matter, I'll put them in order. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> Okay, um, here we are. I gotta talk to... Oh? You got the pendant of courage. Now I will tell you more of the legend. Three or four generations ago, an order of knights protected the royalty of the Helia. These knights of Hyrule were also guardians of the pendant of courage. Unfortunately, most of them were destroyed in the great war against evil that took place when the seven wise men created their seal. Among the descendants of the Knights of Hyrule, a hero must appear. I see. Petey, I believe you. What did I say? You should get the remaining pendants and carry this with you. This is a treasure passed down by the families of the wise men. I want you to have it. The boots! He gives you the Pegasus shoes. Now you can execute a devastating dash attack. Hold the A button. A helpful item is hidden in the cave. Er, <coughs> A helpful item is hidden in the cave on the east side of Lake Hylia. Get it! All right. I think I've been in here before, so I think I've gotten... Yeah, I already got that. Um, so I'm going to hold... Yeah! <laughs> okay. Wait. Oh, not bad. So, Lake Hylia... I'm pretty sure is that thing all the way down at the bottom. And he says something on the east side. So that's all the way over there. So there's a cave. Oh, I see it. Let's go there. Let's head there. Um, so I got to get these two pendants. And then once I get them, um, I will be able to go get the master sword. And I'll be able to go, um, you know, bop some bad guys on the head. I mean, I can do that, but I'll have to, I'll do some extra bopping. Whee! Um, so, I'm going to try, where am I? Uh, I need to go this way. I'm going to try to uh, keep up the, um, the Philosophy Friday feel of uh, this playthrough. And I'm going to see if I can't, oh dear. Wait, what is that? Get away. Oh, no, I didn't mean to shoot an arrow. Ah! Ha-ha! Get out of here. What's this guy's deal? Uh, keep up the uh, Philosophy Friday feel as long as I can. What is up with this guy? Hmm, you look like you might have an interesting destiny, may I tell you, Fortune? No, thank you. It is indeed a poor man who's not interested in future. Bye, goodbye. You swindle. Um, yeah, so as long as I feel like I can just kind of come up with things off the top of my head. Oh, no. Okay, I can't go this way. Wait a second. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go more around. So I gotta go up. This is nice. I can kind of, like, travel a little bit quicker. Whee! Uh, today I was thinking I would talk a little... Whoa! I would talk a little bit about um, one of my... So I'm not into medieval philosophy for the most part. I don't really... Um, I don't really do it. I don't study it. Um, but I think it is cool. Um, some of it is really cool. I'm not a big fan of Augustine. I think... I'm, you know, I'm just not like... In the same way that I'm not really into Aristotle, I'm also not into Augustine. And a lot of medieval philosophy... Ow! is really, really influenced... No, this is really bad. Is really, really influenced by, um, by Aristotle. I gotta stay away. Um, 
But one medieval figure that I... Uh, what is that? I don't remember those at all. Okay, there we go. Get that beeping out of here. Um, is Anselm. St. Anselm, uh, uh, Archbishop of Canterbury. Uh, lived from... Uh, oh, they hurt me so bad. He lived from about... Um, I don't know, till like the beginning of the 12th century. Um, and one of the... Oh, that was close. There we go. One of the ideas that he's most well known for is uh, what's called the ontological argument for the existence of God. Um, and I used to not... Like, philosophical theology or theological philosophy, whichever way you want to think about it, uh, not really my thing. Oh, I don't have the net. Ah, rats. Come here. Um, not really my thing, but I've become... Oh, I know how to do it. I gotta go in. Is this the ice rod? This might be the ice rod. Um, it's something I've become more interested in the more into philosophy I've gotten, partly because of Plato. Plato's very... Ah! Plato's very interested in the idea of uh, the divine. Um... Uh, and partly because I've gotten more into Kant. Um, and Kant has a very specific idea of what the idea of a deity or of God is all about. Um, open up. Ha ha ha! You found the ice rod. I'm Sarsasar. I'm Sarsaparilla. I'm Siraga. Uh, Siracha. Okay, I gotta go all the way back now because... Ooh, give me that heart. There we go. Um, I gotta go all the way. Oh, no! <laughs> I can't swim. I cannot swim right now. I wonder if I should go get the boots. Part of the, uh, part of the difficulty of this right now is the last uh, several times I've watched a playthrough of this, it's been of, of a randomizer. Um, and randomizers are super cool. Um, but if you watch a randomizer, you kind of just forget where everything is. Oh, no. Get away. You kind of just forget where everything is because everything's in a different place. If you are interested in randomizers, um, Super Beard Bros do a really good, uh, interesting one. Oh, oh, hello. That's what I want. And that's just fine. Get away! Ah! Oh, man. What's in here? Oh. Um... Oh, I only have one bomb left. I can't kill these guys. Uh, oops. No, 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 no. Continue game. Um, oh, I wonder. Unless. Come here. Ho, 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 ho. Wait. Let's get that. Bow. Okay. Nice. Ah, uh, that. Come here. I'm going to run out. Okay, I've got one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. Yeah! <laughs> oh, look at this dude. This guy looks bad as heck. Take some rupees, but don't tell you what I gave to you, okay? Keep it between us. Oh, that's nice. That's going to max me out, though. Bombas. Uh, that's, I'm maxed out. I'm still maxed out. This is arrows? Yeah, okay. All right, I gotta go buy some stuff. Oh, no. I can't get any more. I could save and quit and get all the way back to, um, uh, get all the way back to the village, which I think is where I want to, oh, rats. I think is where I want to go because I want to buy stuff. Oh, that's not the direction. Oh, I gotta go up here. Hello. Oh no, bee! Get away from the bee. Nice. Oh. Oh, you know what? I just remembered. Oh, sometimes you can. Um, sometimes you can bonk uh, walls instead of blowing them up. Stop it! Okay. More arrows! What do we got here? We're just exploring. Oh, hello. Please heal me. I love you. 
Um, so let's go back to Anselm, Archbishop of Canterbury. He has this thing called the cosmological argument. That's typically what it's called. He didn't call it that. Um, the uh, argument uh, that it's found in is is in a thing called the Froslogion. Um, it has some meaning in, in in Greek. I don't remember what it is, but it's basically just like, hey, here's here's like an argument that we're going to talk about. Um, it's a sort of like a dialectical process going back and forth to come up with an idea about something. And for him, that idea that he wanted to come up with was, oh, that's not where I want to go. Ah, yeah, it is. Um, is to come up with an, an argument for the existence of God, but he wasn't interested in it because he didn't believe in God. He was interested in it because he wanted to come up... Ow! What kind of thing is that? He wanted to come up with... Um, Hello, sweet child. Oh, he, he disappeared because he's a ghost. Goodbye. Um, he, he calls it faith-seeking understanding. So the idea is, I already believe that there's a God. Um, but what I want to do is I want to use the faculty that God has given me in order to come up with a rational understanding and not a faith understanding. And I, th I think this is really interesting and important um say what oh well first let's talk to this guy i'm quarreling with my younger brother i steal the door to his room because i'm a huge jerk um i think it's important to acknowledge that because um i think both philosophical and theological conversations are important um did you come from is he still angry yeah go hang out with him you jerk um Oh, hello. If you can reach the goal within 15 seconds, we'll give you something good. Ready, set, go. I don't think I'm going to do it. No! No, just, I want to blow up the sign. I can't get there. I, uh, I know what I have to do. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, yeah, I can. I was going to say, I can't do it. Um... Yeah, I gotta do that. Hello. 26 seconds. Try again. So, um, I think that's important because when you have a theological conversation, you are already admitting... Hello, talk to me. Oh, I gotta leave and come back. You're already admitting that there are certain things that you are taking for granted. Um, ready, go. Um, there are already things that you are just like, no, we're not gonna, we're gonna assume that these things are the case. Um, and, and that is the case in any religion, right? Like, yay, I did it! Piece of heart. Um, so if I am a Christian, for the most part, like, I'm not, I'm not gonna entertain the possibility that God does not exist. I, because that is the kind of thing that I believe on faith um i kind of take it for granted that that is the case and then i try to understand like okay if i believe in god like what is god like um this is what i i find most interesting about kant in a lot of ways is this the library haha -ha, look at this book Bonk? this is the book of medoro that lets me get into one of the dungeons oh mudora um and uh, what, what Kant says about this is the person who says God definitely exists and I know this and the person who says God definitely does not exist and I know this are both equally wrong. Um, not because they're bad people or those are dumb things to believe, but because the existence of God is not the sort of thing that admits to knowledge claims. Um, that is, when you are saying God exists, you're not saying something uh, that is knowledge in the strictest sense of the word. And I kind of uh, appeal to that idea. I think what he means is not that it's false, or it's not that it's dumb or bad. It's just that it's neither true nor false. Um, and there are things that are neither true nor false. We might be tempted to say, like, oh, that just means it's opinion or whatever. What do you got for me, man? My hold anything bottles? Low, low price of 100 rupees. Yeah, I'll take one. Uh, I gotta, I gotta get rid of some of this cash. 
Oh no! Now I'm a wanted man. Come here! Oh, he ran away. Um, so, given all of that kind of context about... Um, I gotta go all the way around. Given all that sort of context about um, the existence of God and like faith seeking and understand all that, uh, like we have different kinds of discourse. What Anselm was trying to do is like bring those things together um, because he's like, look, I'm not gonna be like the fool, uh, which he says like, um, I think it's Proverbs three, maybe. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Um, I can't get in there. Well, how do I get in there? Do I gotta go? Oh, I gotta go all the way around. Okay, that's that's fine. We can live that. Um, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God, and we don't want to be like the fool, right? We want to be not foolish. We want to use um, the rationality and, that God has given us to use. So the cosmological argument goes something like this: um, God is that than which no greater can be conceived. Um, we might call this um, the greatest possible being, uh, although I tend to avoid that even when I'm teaching that to like undergrads who, you know, like it, they don't really care that much. I tend to avoid that because I think to say that something is the greatest possible being and to say it is that than which no greater can be conceived are two different things. Um, and I want to be sort of precise with what I'm talking about. The greatest possible being um, has certain kinds of connotations, but that in which no greater can be conceived, I think appropriately keeps it in the space that, oh dear, appropriately keeps it in the space that Anselm wants it to be, which is in the conception, like in the mind of the person thinking about it. And I think that this is a really interesting, get out of my way. I think that this is a really interesting moment, right? Because, oh, I got to use the book. No, there we go. To open the way to go forward, make your wish here and it will be granted. All right, we're going to go in. Yeah, okay. All right, okay. All right, okay. All right. Um... In the mind, right, the greatest possible being assumes something about the existence of that than which no greater can be conceived, that that than which no greater can be conceived does not assume. That than which no greater can be conceived assumes, oh dear, um, assumes that it is not yet real in the sense of in the real world. And this is a very modern prejudice. Um, the idea of like, oh dear. The idea of something being real as like in the real world, not in the mind. Um, aha, defeated. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing in this dungeon. So here we go. Here we go. Oh, monkeys. <laughs> can't touch this so uh his argument that than which no greater can be conceived um is something like god is that than which no greater can be conceived um and the quality of um like being i'm using quality in a very non-philosophical sense like what it would mean for something to be so great that nothing greater can be conceived would have to include that it exists, that it is in the real world. Um, oh dear. I think this takes me outside. Yay, I want to go here because I think there's a piece of heart down here. Um, so he would say something like, imagine, yay, imagine the greatest possible pizza. Um, the, just the greatest possible pizza that you could possibly conceive of. It's like, it's a certain size that's like good for you to eat, right? Oh no, I have no magic. Ah, Krangle Beans. Why isn't anyone giving me magic? Now I gotta fight all these Trundle Bows again. 
Um, boo, 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 boo. Uh, and it's got maybe it's got pineapple on it, or maybe it has a special kind of cheese that you really like. Um, oh, rats! No, no, no! Stop it! Uh, maybe it's got thin crust. If you're a person who is real, you like thin crust. If you don't like thin crust, you're a bad person. Um, is what I choose to believe. <laughs> oh no! Okay, I don't. Wait for it. I don't, what would happen if I lit these though? Absolutely nothing. Okay. Um, oh dear. So um, we've got all of these characteristics of the greatest possible pizza. But what Anselm says is, for it to actually be the greatest possible pizza, not only would it have to have those things, it would have to exist. It would have to not just be in your mind. It would have to be out there in the real world there, right? I can imagine a horse with six legs being, like, awesome or whatever, but it's not there out, out there in the real world. So the best possible horse isn't the way that I'm imagining it or something like that. Um, Beauty, it is I, Sriracha. You must never find a... Fi okay. Um... So what he says is, okay, if that's the way that is, then God must be like that. If I can conceive of a being uh, that does not exist, can I hit you with this? Yeah. If I can conceive of a being that does not exist outside my mind, it's not the greatest possible being. Um, because things that exist are better than things that don't exist. Now, this assumes a lot of things. Um, yay! I'm the map. This assumes a lot of things, like that, one, existence is a predicate of things, right? If I say that it exists, then I've said something new about that thing. Um, that kind of shows certain philosophical prejudices. Uh, for me, to, to add that it exists um, doesn't really say anything new about an object, because I think that if an object is intelligible, then it exists. Um, even things that um, may even seem, according to certain logics, contradictory, right? Like, a square circle, to me, exists not because I can draw one, um, but because when I say square circle, you know intellectually what I'm attempting to communicate. The concept itself is impossible, right? Like, it, it's, it's two logically contradictory things. But, oh, <laughs> that felt good. Big key! Um, the, oh dear. <laughs> the way back is always a little dice here. Um, but Anselm doesn't think that. Anselm doesn't think the way that I do. He says that um, to, for something to exist is to say something new about it. Because I could say, ooh, look at this pizza in my mind. But it, it's not, I can't actually ever make that pizza, right? Um, and that means it's better. Uh, so God is whatever it is that nothing greater can be conceived of that. And this actually relies on um, a concept that, I, I think the name of the guy is Lovejoy. There's a guy named Lovejoy who... Um, uh, kind of coined this this phrase the great chain of being um, and the idea there is um, that in the sort of medieval way of understanding things uh, there is a, like a ladder basically and everything ow everything that exists what i got to push one of these. Ow! I don't remember what it is. Aha! There it is. Oh, run! Uh, everything that exists has a place on this chain in, like, a hierarchy. Um, and God is at the very top of it. Um, 
Now, I, there are different ways to interpret this. I actually think that um, the, the most plausible way of understanding... Goodness! The most plausible way of understanding um, Anselm in this context is... Well, I'll get there in a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. That in which no greater can be conceived is God. Aha! I can lift heavy things now. Um, and... That in which no greater can be conceived is God because he's, he's the greatest possible thing that you could come up with in your brain, right? Um, oh, that was the key room. I already got that. And that's how we know God actually exists because um, things that exist in my mind can be made better if they exist in real life. Um, so, like, that's the way that... Ow. That's the way that you know um, that, that's the way that you know that, um, like, there is a god. Gah! I can't not, okay, wait, okay, that was, that was helpful. Ugh, okay. There we go. Oh my goodness, I'm the worst at this game. That, oh, so there was nothing in here. What a load of bull honky. Bye. Oh, I should have gotten that. Rats. Uh, that's God. Now, there was this guy uh, named Gaunalo who was like, not so fast, my friend. And what he was trying to communicate was, why do we think that existence is a property of things? Oh, I don't want to do that. That'd be silly. That'd be a silly thing to do. Um, and he said, hey, imagine the greatest possible island. Um, the greatest possible island. And this kind of gets back to my pizza analogy. Like, what would that look like for there to be the greatest possible island or the greatest possible pizza? Um, one, it would be really tough to know, right? And also, how could you assert that that thing would have to exist, right? If you think about the, the greatest possible island, there's no reason that the greatest possible island has to exist. There's no reason that the greatest possible pizza has to exist. It could just be a fantasy in my mind. It could be uh, what Kant calls a regulatory or a regulating concept. Um, it could be what the Stoics think of as like a, a similar kind of thing, right? Oh, that doesn't exist in real life. It just exists to help me um, like decide what the right thing is to do based on a sort of scale. Um, I wish I knew what to do next. Um, ooh! Guys, I think I'm lost. Maybe I do have to go out that window. I don't know. Okay, okay, let's reset. Um, basically, Gandalo's point is just because something is the greatest doesn't mean it has to exist. Um, and then uh, Anselm, and, and it's important to understand, Gandalo isn't trying to like dunk on Anselm or whatever. He's just saying like, hey, um, you know, we're both on the same team here, but let me try to poke a hole in your argument, maybe to make it a little stronger. Um, and did I go in here? I think I went in here. No, I went in there already. Um... And Anselm's reply to this is actually, oh, God is a different kind of being. God, God has what are called like great making qualities. Um, this didn't do anything for me. <laughs> ah, dingus. Um, and great making qualities. Ooh, what about here? Okay, well, that's not what I wanted. What's going on here? I was in a dungeon a minute ago. Oh, it's Cyberstock. It is the Book of Mudora. Well, I already knew that, man. Whatever. Get out of my life. Uh, Anselm basically says, like, God is the kind of thing that, like, because of the way being the greatest possible conceivable thing works, is that would be special for him, that his existence would work that way. That feels like a dodge. 
but I think he's right in saying that because when you say the best possible pizza, what you're looking for is a, a, a member of a group that is the best member of that group. But when we talk about God, we're talking about a member of all groups that is the best possible member of any group in all groups. Um, and that, I, I think that looks a little different. What I basically think ends up happening is the that than which no greater can be conceived ends up looking something like the totality of being. Um, I read Anselm as what's called an ontotheologist, which basically means like what we mean when we talk about God is the sum total of all beings and possibilities. That there's no person or deity named God who has a sort of like outside view of the world or whatever. Um, that what when we refer to God, we are talking about the entire collection of possibilities and of beings and of things that could ever be. Um, and not a being that exists outside time looking in on it. Um, and that's just because I, I have certain commitments and ideas of like what it, what the nature of the universe is and why can't I get upstairs? Are there no stairs here? I don't I don't know, man. Looks like there are no stairs. Maybe I need to bomb a wall. Let's try that. Um, oh, wait, actually, let me look at this again. I mean, that's where it would be, I guess. Yeah. Um, da -da -da. Get away, get away, get away. Um... Yeah, I don't think that that's what Anselm was thinking, but I think that that's a really good, um, I think that that's an appropriate, that was my last bomb! Ah, oh, I think that that's an appropriate reading of the situation. Um, and if you have certain metaphysical commitments that make it such that there could be no being outside of being, which is something that I believe, um, then that would be a normal thing for you to sort of decide. Um, anyway, uh, like I said, I'm doing all of this kind of off the top of my head, um, just to kind of like, it's, it's fun to kind of like test one of these, it's fun to kind of test like what I remember from things that I've taught. Um, and, uh, you know, normally like I've taught this and I like have notes and things. Um, but, uh, I, I think there is something to be said for, um, yeah, I didn't work. I think there is something to be said for the uh, being able to just be like, hey, let me talk about this off the cuff. And, you know, you don't have to be right or, like, perfect or anything about it. Uh, I think it's just a matter of, like, oh, that's going to inform the way that I, I think about different stuff. And I think it's important for that to inform the way that we think about God. Because um, no matter what you think about God, I, I think we can all agree that the idea of God in this sort of territory that comes with that concept is an important concept for humans um, and shows up in different ways. And, and I think it's important for us to like know things about that. Um, anyway, I have to go look at a walkthrough because I can't remember how to beat this, which makes me worried about the future of this playthrough. But we're going to get through it. And we're going to figure it out. Um, and thanks for hanging out with me and talking about philosophy things. Uh, we'll see you next time on Pete Plays. Bye, guys.